Hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. It's my first night in my new place. I am exhausted from a whole day of moving and unpacking, but I wanted to celebrate my move by doing a tag that's really special to me. I don't normally enjoy doing tags, but I really love this tag and have appreciated watching everyone do this one. And if you haven't done this one yet, I've noticed. It's the hashtag stand with trans kids tag made by Leo Bancroft. As I hope you know by now, trans children are in danger. Some state governments going so far as to labeling support of trans kids child abuse. This is fucked up. So Leo's tag is meant to let trans kids know that these are people who will support them and disagree with what the government is trying to do to them. If you haven't done this tag yet, please, Please do it. For the sake of the children in your life, they need to know that you would still love them even if they were trans. One, tag some friends who may want to do this tag and also hashtag stand with trans kids. I'm going to tag some people who I haven't seen do this tag yet and hope that they will reconsider their silence on this issue. Shelly Swearingen, Book Talks with Mrs. Thomas, Gina Stanier, Tea Time with Tracy and Violet, and anyone else who hasn't done this tag. Two, tell us about some books on your TBR pile featuring a trans or non-binary character or nonfiction about trans or non-binary stuff. Being Pride Month, I'm planning to read mostly queer, specifically trans books. Here are a few of the ones on my list. The Parcel by Anash Irani. This powerful new work about a transgender sex worker in the red light district of Bombay who is given an unexpected task, is a gripping literary page turner, difficult and moving, surprising and tender. The parcel's astonishing heart, soul, and unforgettable voice is Madhu, born a boy, but a eunuch by choice, who has spent most of her life in a close-knit clan of transgender sex workers in Kamathapura, the notorious red light district of Bombay. Madhu identifies herself as a hijra, a person belonging to the third sex, neither here nor there, man nor woman. Now at 40, she has moved away from sex work, her trade since her teens, and is forced to beg for support from the charismatic head of the hijra clan, Gurumai. One day, Madhu receives a call from Padma Madam, the most feared brothel owner in the district. A parcel has arrived. A young girl from the provinces, betrayed and trafficked by her aunt. And Madhu must prepare it for its fate. Despite Madhu's reluctance, she is forced to take the job by Gurumai. As Madhu's emotions spiral out of control, her past comes back to haunt her threatening to unravel a lifetime's work and identity. This is a dark, devastating, but ultimately redemptive novel. Light from Uncommon Stars by Raika Aoki. Shizuka Satomi made a deal with the devil. To escape damnation, she must entice seven other violin prodigies to trade their souls for success. She has already delivered six. When Katrina Nguyen a young transgender runaway catches Shizuka's ear with her wild talent. Shizuka can almost feel the curse lifting. She's found her final candidate. But in a donut shop off a bustling highway in the San Gabriel Valley, Shizuka meets Lan Tran, retired starship captain, interstellar refugee, and mother of four. Shizuka doesn't have time for crushes or coffee dates what with her very soul on the line, but Lan's kind smile and eyes like stars might just redefine a soul's worth. And maybe something as small as a warm donut is powerful enough to break a curse as vast as the California coastline. As the lives of these three women become entangled by chance and fate, a story of magic, identity, curses, and hope begins and a family worth crossing the universe for is found. Tranny by Laura Jane Grace. The provocative transgender advocate and lead singer of the punk rock band Against Me 
provides a searing account of her search for identity and her true self. It began in a bedroom in Naples, Florida, when a misbehaving punk teenager named Tom Gable, armed with nothing but an acoustic guitar and a head full of anarchist politics, landed in a riff. Gable formed against me and rocketed the band from its scrappy beginnings, banging a drum kit made of pickle buckets to a major label powerhouse that critics have called this generation's The Clash. Since its inception in 1997, Against Me has been one of punk's most influential modern bands, but also one of its most divisive. With every notch the four-piece climbed in their career, they gained new fans while infuriating their old ones. They suffered legal woes, a revolving door of drummers, and a horde of angry, militant punks who called them sellouts and tried to sabotage their shows at every turn. But underneath the public turmoil, something much greater occupied Gable, a secret kept for 30 years, only acknowledged in the scrawled out pages of personal journals and hidden in lyrics. Through a troubled childhood, delinquency, and struggles with drugs, Gable was on a punishing search for identity. Not until May of 2012 did a Rolling Stone profile finally reveal it. Gable is a transsexual and would from then on be living as a woman under the name Laura Jane Grace. Tranny is the intimate story of Against Me's enigmatic founder, weaving the narrative of the band's history as well as Grace's with dozens of never before seen entries from the piles of journals Grace kept. More than a typical music memoir about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, although it certainly has plenty of that, Tranny is an inside look at one of the most remarkable stories in the history of rock. This is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. This is how a family keeps a secret and how that secret ends up keeping them. This is how a family lives happily ever after until happily ever after becomes complicated. This is how children change and then change the world. This is Claude. He's five years old, the youngest of five brothers, and loves peanut butter sandwiches. He also loves wearing a dress and dreams of being a princess. When he grows up, Claude says, he wants to be a girl. Rosie and Penn want Claude to be whoever Claude wants to be. They're just not sure they're ready to share that with the world. Soon the entire family is keeping Claude secret until one day it explodes. This is How It Always Is is a novel about revelations, transformations, fairy tales, and family. And it's about the ways that this is how it always is. Change is always hard and miraculous and hard again. Parenting is always a leap into the unknown with crossed fingers and full hearts. Children grow, but not always according to plan. And families with secrets don't get to keep them forever. That last one I'm really excited for because my aunt is actually going to be reading it with her book club. So yeah, she was like, Kevy, you need to read this too so we can talk about it. So yeah, that's gonna be cute. I'm excited. I'm really excited to hear what her friends think about it too. The last book that I wanna share for this, I actually have up here, there it is, right here, on top of Fierce Femmes. It's called The Little Blue Encyclopedia by Hazel Jane Plant. The playful and poignant novel Little Blue Encyclopedia for Vivian sifts through a queer trans woman's unrequited love for her straight trans friend who died. A queer love letter steeped in desire, grief, and delight. The story is interspersed with encyclopedia entries about a fictional TV show set on an isolated island. The experimental form functions at once as a manual for how pop culture can help soothe and mend us, and as an exploration for oft-overlooked sources of pleasure, including karaoke, birding, and butt toys. <laughs> Ultimately, the little blue encyclopedia for Vivian reveals with glorious detail the emotional nuance, 
the woman the narrator loved, why she loved her, and the depths of what she has lost. So yeah, those are just a few of the books that I hope to get to this month. Three, recommend a favorite book, show, or movie featuring a trans or non-binary character. Oh, okay. So first off, I just made a whole video about this for my April wrap-up. I recommend y'all go check out my hashtag TransGirlApril video because I recommended so many books by and about trans people. It'll be linked up in the cards and in the description. The Rocky Horror Picture Show, the 2016 version with Laverne Cox. I know that most diehard Rocky Horror fans hate this version, but I love it. I love it so much. Honestly, I might even like it. No, not even might. I do like this version better than the original. It's awesome. It's, it's just, it's perfect. It's perfect. Laverne Cox is incredible as Dr. Frankenfurter. Oh, she's just so hot and powerful and intense and just, oh, she just gives everything that that role needs and looks so good doing it. Oh my gosh. And then you've also got Christina Milian and Ivy Levan, and even a cameo from Tim Curry. I love Tim Curry and oh, just seeing present day Tim Curry coming back for a little cameo. Oh, that just made me so happy. And the costumes are phenomenal and it's just such a beautiful composition. Everything is just so beautiful to look at. The only place this film falls short for me is the casting of Rocky. He didn't work for me, but every single other piece of this film just fits perfectly. I love it so, so much. Oh my gosh. Wow. Fuck. Oh. Paris is Burning is a documentary from 1999 about Harlem's drag ball culture, where you get to meet many of the drag queens and trans people who defined an era. It can be hard to watch being filmed during the AIDS epidemic. Fuck Reagan, may he rest in piss. But it is such an important piece of our history, so I think everyone has to watch it. Assassination Nation is a great film about four high school girls, one of whom is trans, trying to survive in the chaos after a school-wide hack and everyone's darkest secrets going public and the four of them are blamed. It's an intense thriller and I really love it. Lastly, I want to recommend The Politician on Netflix, starring my non-binary friend Theo Germain. I haven't watched it personally just because Ryan Murphy's shows tend to be bad for my mental health. But y'all really gotta go support Theo. They're awesome and oh, so pretty and so good. And I just, they're doing so well and I'm so excited for them. So please watch the show, support Theo. Yeah. Four, everyone has their own journey and no one demographic is a monolith. Recommend a book with a journey, however you define that. Ooh. I'm going to choose This Time For Me by Alexandra Billings. I just posted a video about this wonderful memoir. It tells Alex's journey from little gay boy to homeless trans sex worker to television and Broadway star. Incredible. Absolute must read. Five, none of us knows everything, even about our own identities. Oh my gosh, sidebar, that is so true. Like literally, literally the first day of Pride, I saw a shit post, a shit post. And I was like, oh, shit, I just learned a new thing about my identity. Oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> all of us are always learning more about who we are as long as we're willing to listen to ourselves and to be open to who we could possibly be. Yeah. Okay, back to the question. What is a book that taught you something either about yourself or the world around you? Okay, I've talked about this book a handful of times now, but I have to choose Hunger by Roxane Gay. While I'd always struggled with my size, I was never able to understand or articulate the issues I faced until this book spelled it out for me. Hunger helped me to better understand and appreciate my experience and help propel me to becoming a fat liberation activist. Six, when things are hard in the world, or in our lives, sometimes 
There are things we can do to help center and refocus ourselves, to bring joy, to keep us going, to keep living, resisting, being authentically amazing selves. What are things you do to center yourself or find joy? One thing that will always bring me immeasurable joy is watching iconic historical drag performances. Y'all know I love to study drag history and there are some performances where watching them just feels like a religious experience. It's just so powerful and moving. The first I wanna show you is the Goddess Raven from Atlanta, not to be confused with Blackfish Raven from Drag Race. The Goddess Raven's signature performance was to the song Tonight Is What It Means To Be Young from the 1984 film Streets of Fire. This routine consisted of twirling fire batons and fire eating. This performance is incredible. And then this particular instance of it is just, oh my gosh. So Raven had performed this however many times, countless times. It was what she was known for. And then in 2000 or 2001, Atlanta's like city code or ordinance or whatever made it illegal for her to perform this anymore. So she decided that she was going to perform it one last time at 2001's Atlanta Pride. The fire marshal expressly forbids it. And she just goes on stage, flips them off, and lights the stage on fire. Oh. Just, wow. Like this, this is what it means to be queer, to express yourself unapologetically, even when people will do whatever they can to try to keep you from expressing yourself. You get up and you do it anyway, consequences be damned. It's the epitome of the expression, be gay, do crime. That makes this performance just so profound and captivating. And I mean, just the performance itself already is just phenomenal. And then the context, just, oh my gosh, I get chills just thinking about it. Oh, it's, oh, go watch it. It's, it's down there, watch it, watch it. Next, there's what has become known as the best entrance in drag history, performed by Tandy Amon Dupree. She's performing the song Holding Out for a Hero as Wonder Woman, which is a very common, almost cliche combination at this point. But Tandy takes it to a whole nother level. Wait for it. Wait for it. Bam! She dropped onto the stage from the rafters into the splits. This entire performance is immaculate. You should definitely go watch it. Then of course, there's Sarah Andrews. Oh, I love her. When I was a baby trans woman and drag queen, in one of the very first drag shows I ever attended, I saw Sarah Andrews and it changed me. She goes on stage delivering that transsexual fantasy, wearing practically nothing, just showing off this gorgeous body that she has worked so hard to obtain and just has it beautifully, minimally adorned. When I first saw her, I was like, I want to be a fat version of this. Just serving this fantasy, bearing just about every inch of myself on that stage. I've yet to achieve it with the level of polish that Sarah Andrews has, but it's something I still aspire to. Finally, there's this legendary drag performance from the great Dina Cass, Miss Continental Plus, 1997. While I don't follow a lot of the drag pageants, I am very into the Continental pageantry system for many reasons. Primarily because it's always been based here in Chicago, so it's our pageant, but also because of its history. Continental was founded because every other drag pageant in the country discriminated against trans contestants. They were forbidden from competing because it's female impersonation. And if you're a woman, you can't be impersonating a woman. That kind of bullshit nonsense. And Jim Flint, the founder of the Baton, he's like, I have so many kick-ass performers in my shows that deserve to be winning titles. So he started his own fucking pageant, Miss Continental. Almost exclusively, there's been a couple of exceptions, but almost exclusively, this pageant is always won by trans women. 
which is just iconic. Come on. Yes. So nowadays there's Miss Continental, Miss Continental Plus for the big girls, then Miss Continental Elite for the queens of a certain age, and Mr. Continental for male entertainers. Dina Cass won Miss Continental Plus in 1997. So in this routine, Dina does her whole drag makeup on stage while lip syncing to Shirley Bassey's This Is My Life. Getting into face is hard work and typically a very long process. So her ability to not only condense it all to the length of a song, but also to have it steps synchronized to the music just shows what a masterful artist she is. Watching her transformation, oh, it's an incredible experience and always makes me feel good. All of these videos I just talked about are gonna be down below. So watch, educate yourself. Learn something, enjoy something, be entertained. Yes, darling. <laughs> Seven, what's your walk on music or your feel at home in your body music? That's a wonderful question. I'm not a hundred percent sure what walk on music means, but I think I would choose something like My Chemical Romance's Black Parade or something from Against Me's Transgender Dysphoria Blues album. I love both of those so much. Now for comfort music, I've got two Spotify playlists I've created that I'm gonna share with you, both of which will be linked in the description. The first I call That Good Gay Shit. <laughs> It is a playlist of lesbian and queer women and primarily sapphic love songs. This multi-genre playlist makes me feel safe and accepted and validated in my half-lesbian identity. <laughs> Artists featured include Mercy Bell, LP, Muna, King Princess, Girl in Red, B. Steadwell, Kalani, Kiana Key, and more. The other playlist is simply called Hugs. This is a collection of songs that feel like a warm hug. The singer singing directly to you, telling you that you'll be all right, that you're loved and you're not alone. This playlist is just so healing and comforting. Whenever I'm having a rough time, and even when I'm feeling good, it's just a great source of joy. It really helps me to feel zen and just, I'm at peace. I'm okay. Artists include Rachel Platten, Desiree, Sarah Bareilles, Cimarelli, Alicia Cara, Pink, Kelly Clarkson, Christina Aguilera, etc., Janet Jackson, Mariah Carey, Kylie Minogue. Since the shutdown in 2020, these two playlists have been the bulk of what I've listened to. And I just, I love them. And I hope that you'll give them a listen and love them too. Eight, finding mentors, people of wisdom, or heroes can be another way to help us navigate life. Who are some of your mentors? Can you share something they taught you or inspired you to learn more about? One of my mentors is my drag wren, non-binary parent, Patty Duke Ellington. Patty is an hilarious, outstanding performer with a powerful voice. If you've ever seen my all-time favorite drag performance, link here and down there, you'll hear them harmonizing along to Like a Prayer, elevating the song and the performance with this unparalleled magic. Patty has been an entertainer for decades, even touring the country back in the 70s with the Starkist Tuna Band. I really love the way that they play with gender during their performances and enjoy listening to all of their fascinating stories. Nine, who are some out trans or non-binary booktubers, Instagrammers, authors, actors, etc., who you'd like to shout out. Well, Obvi, there's my boy Leo. He's great. Oh, and then Books and Bow. I've started watching them recently. Oh, and I love their channel, and they're so pretty. Oh, fuck, I'm so tea for tea. <laughs> fuck. Lately, one of my favorite trans Twitter accounts has been Salem, at The Warm Void. Black, trans mask, lesbian, leather dyke boy thing. Predominant autistic horror writer, filthy zine artist. Fat, disabled, polyam, T for T, 24, he, him, mommy, 18 plus. I first found him through a review of Manhunt and wow, he just, he has such a wonderful way with words. I'm gonna link his Twitter and his Patreon if you wanna give him support. 10. What are some organizations you'd like to shout out for supporting trans kids slash trans folks? First, I want to shout out some Chicago-specific organizations. 
The Transformative Justice Law Project does incredible work representing trans people pro bono. They have regularly occurring name change mobilizations where they will help trans people with all the name change paperwork and appearing before the judge and help them every step of the way through the name change process. When they helped me change my name and legal gender, they made it so easy and seamless and I'm so grateful for all their help. Chicago House is an incredible organization which provides many kinds of benefits for Chicago's queer population. I sought help from their Trans Works program, which helps transgender people find employment. I was unemployed and struggling for a long time, and they helped me with resumes and finding jobs that would be a good fit for me. So many other things, and just, I wouldn't be here today without all of their incredible help. And that is just one facet of everything they do. Finally, and I believe most importantly, if you want your money to go towards helping trans people, the best way you can do this is by giving your money directly to trans people. Every day on social media, I see trans people posting that they need financial assistance to get through whatever it is that they're dealing with. Donating to them directly will provide immediate, tangible aid to people who desperately need it. For example, a really dear friend of mine, Helianthus, can really use your help. I'll read directly from their GoFundMe page. I am at risk of losing my safe housing from not being able to work consistently due to rapid decline in my mental health, thus resulting in several months of missed payments. I currently go through a government-funded housing program for people with mental illness, and they are evicting me. If I lose my housing, I will be homeless. If I was to become homeless, I wouldn't have access to my very important psych medications and medical professionals which are keeping me alive. I am trying to raise at least half of what I owe so I can convince a judge to let me stay in my housing after I get my court date and pay my car note and phone bill while I'm on medical leave. Please, please give to Healy if you can so they do not wind up on the street and without their psychiatric needs. So there you have the hashtag stand with trans kids tag. I stand with trans kids because I once was a trans kid. What are you personally doing to make the lives of trans kids better? Let me know in the comments below. If your answer is nothing, well then get working on that. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! <laughs>